Hi guys, stay patient once again with part two of my collectible guide for Life is Strange episode two. Now if you haven't seen part one then just check the video description or I'll put a link on the screen. So check that out. Um, but we are going to carry on from where we left off. We left off uh, finishing the diner and we're going to go to junkyard. So that's our next port of call. We're going to play in collectible mode as always so as not to overwrite our decisions. Now I think I may need to actually split this video into three, so the third section I will upload at the same time as, as the other two, uh, but you don't get long on PlayStation 4 to record video. So just to make sure I get it all in and don't have to super rush it, I will uh, split it into three shorter videos. Here we are at the junkyard. There's three collectibles here, as you can see on the uh, chapter select screen. Two of them can be reached right at the beginning of the episode, but the third one is going to need us to complete part of the episode at least, a, a couple of the objectives. Um, so I do apologize that this will take a few minutes, but I like to show you guys the whole process, you know, uh, behind finding these collectibles because like I said in the first uh, video, you really do want to play this through once on your own uh, without any spoilers and then go back and get the collectibles via chapter select. So this way I'm just showing you the quickest way of getting to the uh, places where the collectibles start appearing. Um, and one of those things that we will need to do in this episode is finding the five bottles. They can be a bit of a pain, so at least using this video uh, you won't have to memorise where they all uh, were on your playthrough. We'll try and get to them nice and quickly. Uh, we're going to be given control any moment now. There we are, so once we get control we're going to turn right around, we're going to head towards the bus that's behind us and stand to the left of it near these tyres and it will give us the prompt to take the photo. So that's the first one for this chapter. <clears throat> Now the first bottle is right near here, we're going to head along to the front or to the side of the bus here, just next to us really, we're going to try and grab the bottle, it's going to smash, so we're going to have to rewind time and grab the crate that is to our right, um, that's going to allow us to climb up and grab it without damaging it. So there we are, we can click on the bottle again and use the crate to reach it. So now we're going to carry on to the right again. We are going to keep running down here and before we get to the train track which is in front of us there, we're going to turn left up this pathway and there's a bottle just to our right next to that big tyre. And then the collectible is in this area as well. If we head in we will see a doe just to the left of the area, you can see it in the distance there, it's kind of shimmering because I think this doe has some kind of relevance to the story and specifically to Max's time manipulation power because as you can see it almost looks as if it's not actually in our time, we're going to take a photo of it but it looks as though it's kind of a mirage or something, you know a reflection of another time period maybe. Uh, it be interesting to see how that fits into the story because we've seen that doe a few times Anyway, from here we are going to carry on with the chapter because we need to reach a certain point in the actual story to unlock the third collectible. So we're going to head towards, from there, head towards the uh, train track and as we reach here we're going to head right into this little area with the campfire between the cars and grab the third bottle. <clears throat> as we head out it's going to uh, drop those um, wooden you know crates or whatever they are on us we're gonna have to rewind and make our way out um, if we carry on to the right along the railway track uh, railway track oh I'm developing a lisp um, we're gonna head into this hut and there is the fourth bottle on the chair there from here we're gonna head out the door and back towards the start area 
From here we are going to go around the car to the left and head up this pathway onto the raised section and we can grab this plank and lay it across the gap so that we can reach the boat and the last bottle is on the boat. There it is just on our left. So now we can head back to Chloe and complete the shooting section where we have to guide her shots. Now I was talking in episode one, I'm um, sorry, in the part one of this video about you know how how good the characters are, how realistic the whole premise is and the interactions and everything. Um, and another thing I do really like about this game now that I've noticed more and more in episode two is the decisions that you have to make. They're never black and white. Now the the Telltale games do this what um, you know really well as well. Uh, they have got better and better at it recently where you make a decision and there's no clear black or white or right or wrong no matter what decision you make you're always going to second guess yourself and that's really cool because that's very realistic and this game does that really well also because you can rewind time and change your decision but no matter what you choose um, you know you're always going to feel like did I make the right choice but that's what's great there is no right or wrong choice for instance, in the first episode, and I hope this isn't a spoiler for anyone because I'm guessing if you're watching a guide for episode two, then likely it is you've played the first episode. Uh, but at one point, um, David Madsen, the security guy for your school, is harassing Kate, who's one of your friends, and she's quite sort of delicate and sensitive. Um, <clears throat> oh, just rewind here. Um, oh. Oh, I thought I pressed rewind, sorry, that's my bad. Um, yeah, so he's harassing her, and you can either intervene, which would keep her happy, you know, make her feel like you're her friend and everything, or you can take a photo, and that, uh, you know, on the surface, that seems like the selfish option, because basically you're a photographer, so it could be like just your curiosity, I want to take a photo of this kind of thing, and it may seem like you don't care about Kate herself. And that's what she thinks when she realises that you were there and you didn't intervene, but you just took a photo. She gets quite upset with you. But the reason I did it is because I wanted proof. I wanted a, um, you know, I wanted a photo of what was happening so that if Kate ever did go to anyone about it or if it got worse and David's harassment became worse, then, you know, she had proof. I could, I could say, look, I've got a photo. So if you, anyone doesn't believe you, here it is kind of thing. So... I was pleased with my decision, despite the fact that the main person involved, the person I was trying to help, which was Kate, she was upset with me. So that's what I think is really great about the decision making. You're always gonna, you're always gonna feel guilty about what you choose, but there's like good sides and bad sides to each choice, and there's no clear, clear way to go. Um, I think they just do that really well, and if you play it, you'll, you understand what I mean. Um, it doesn't, I don't know how much it changes the story. I think there are some things like it, when you finish this episode, it gives you a list of the choices you made compared to, you know, the majority of people. Um, so yeah, it says like certain percentage of people did this, certain percentage did the opposite and it tells you which one you went with. And some of those, um, some of those either choices or things that you were able to accomplish are really quite big events in the game that can go in two vastly different directions so it does make me think that there could be you know some really um, branching pathways a bit like the Telltale games where things can go drastically differently depending on how you play the game so it's going to be very interesting seeing how things turn out and then maybe replaying it and and trying things differently to see how much of a change can be accomplished Anyway, that's my sort of ramble on. As you can tell, I'm quite enjoying this game now. Um, but here we are, we've finished that section. We've got to this cutscene, and immediately after the cutscene, Chloe is lying on the uh, bonnet of this car on the hood, and we can just head to the left and take a photo of her. So that's that section done. Um, that's the junkyard. Now, I am going to stop uploading now because I did actually do the rest of the game in one video and it ended up being more than 15 minutes. So I'm going to quit out, as you will have to do anyway, to get to the chapter select screen. 
and I am going to stop the video for now and catch you guys in part three for the final location. There's only one location left with two collectibles in and we'll just cover that in the final section. So I will catch you there guys, thanks very much.